if we think about food system transformation, we all have very different ideas in our mind. Um, if you wouldn't know, you'd think, wow, this is a fantastic holiday resort being built in some beautiful location. Uh, but this is actually a Chinese, um, very high intensity, uh, multi uh, vertical farming system around um, pig, for pig, pig production. Uh, I, there's hardly a human who actually enters there. So it's the top of the bill in terms of, of high tech. Um, others who think about food transformation could be thinking about something like this. This is a farm um, which in California 10 years ago was wasteland as a result of high intensity pig, uh, sorry, poultry farming and has been completely reconverted into a very ecologically diverse and um, interconnected uh, farm with I think over a hundred different products. So they're very different. Um, of transformation. That's at the production level, but there's also transformation at the level of policy. So this is an example where Bangladesh is completely re re rethinking about its way of dealing, combining both nutrition and, and food production concepts. Um, so that's also a, a, a shift in mindset, as many of you have talked about. And this is a, this is a transformation in the way that markets are being set up. So this is an open source marketing system in East Africa, creating a platform which is very much about balancing power within uh, the way markets work. All aspects of transformation and different scales of transformation. So the key thing about the transformation, of course, is Transformation is not about a gradual, a, 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 a tweaking a system or improving on a certain aspect. You know, in, in Holland, um, for example, we, we have cows who produce 10,000 liters of milk a year on average. Um, you know, tweaking the system is saying, well, we can go from 10 to 11,000. That's not a transformation. Transformation would be actually saying, well, we'll get rid of 50% of our cattle and we'll use that land to, pre to produce um, uh, vegetables for, for domestic production. That would be a radical change. Now, Transformation does happen all the time. It happens in insidious ways through the dynamics of of how the markets of, of systems work. You've all been looking at the different dimensions of the mechanisms of markets, the drivers of the markets, um, the, 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 the ecological context of markets. So, you know, over the last 15 years, we've already been seeing quite a shift in terms of people responding to climate change. Um, and that's changing the food system all the time. So COVID-19 was the most recent one, um, is the most recent one, but these kind of stress and, and uh, tr uh, stresses on the system uh, happen all the time. I think at the moment we've got swine fever, uh, recent in the last six months, swine fever in Nigeria. Uh, we've had, and, and in China, we've had um, locusts in East Africa. We've had floods all across East Africa, but also now dramatically uh, recently, um, more across East Asia. Um, there's you know, Jasmine revolution five years ago. So these st stresses and changes happen all the time. So what we're talking, when we talk about transformation though, when I talk about it and, and with my colleagues, we're saying, well, there's essentially three fundamental things that we try to transform. First of all is being very explicit and deliberate about what are the desired outcomes of food systems? So not what happens as a result of the way food systems um, interact and, and, and operate as they do, but being transformed about saying, well, we actually want to be deliberate about a different kinds of outcomes. The, other, the second dimension of transformation is dealing with the power dynamics that determine how food systems work. Every system is determined by you know, interrelationships and, and, um, and who uh, can decide about what. So being transformative is trying to be deliberately transformative is also about addressing that power dynamics. Who actually has voice? Who actually has control over what choices can be made? Who um, has a chance to, to, is able to block uh, uh, processes and, and who not? Um, the third thing is that the way that also the pyrodynamics um, 
um, and are captured and are shaped by the rules that we set, the explicit rules in terms of our regulations, our taxation schemes, um, our um, policies, but also the more informal rules, the cultural rules, the norms, the historical relationships that are captured in the implicit way that we do things and that can be made more explicit. So these are three key aspects when we're talking about transformation is about transforming these in a deliberate manner, being explicit about what's the outcomes we, that we actually would prefer um, um, now rather than, the, than what has been happening so far what power dynamics are necessary to actually achieve those those outcomes um, and where are they now how do we actually rebalance that in a deliberate way and what rules and uh, incentives do we set in place that make sure that we're trying to push in the in the, in the right kind of a direction so when we talk about food system transformation globally and in the context of the un food system summit um, I realize, my apologies, that I'm, I'm actually not looking into the camera. That's my, I have two screens. Let's see, this might actually be, a, there we go. Um, is that um, we actually are talking, where we've shifted over the years from talking about we need to produce enough food, um, so enough calories, to actually saying we need to actually ensure nutrition as well, to saying, well, what we actually demand now from food systems is we and it's it is becoming a demand it's shifting from becoming an possibility to become an expectation towards now becoming in demand it's to say food systems need to be delivering along three areas simultaneously so not just enough uh, calories but really about delivering on healthy diets so that's um shifting you know the bulk of what we do now globally is to be honest producing very low calorie, low value products, low risk products, sugars, starches, oils, and that can be shipped all over the world and turning that much more into fresh produce um, as well, which are much more, which are you know, critical for, for healthy diets in an affordable manner. The second part of it is actually saying, okay, we're, re we're realizing that we're, we're reaching the limits of our production systems. The limits, yes. Um, they are there are unacceptable stresses to our uh, production systems in terms of erosion, in terms of climate impact, in terms of biodiversity loss, in terms of pollution of, of water. So we have to rethink our production bases so that they can generate um, what we need for the uh, for global population of uh, going up to 10 billion, um, but also continuing at 10 billion. So we don't just have to reach the ability to produce, to feed and to produce healthily uh, by 2050, but we've got to be able to do that for, well, centuries to come. The final part, of course, is about creating living incomes for the bulk of people who are involved. So there's 500 million small scale farmers uh, across the well, 500 million farmers across the world. The vast majority of them are small scale farmers, uh, at least 450 million of them. So that's two hectares or below. And there's an enormous amount of spin off activity in terms of the, the processing, the trading, the transporting, the selling. How do we actually deliberately make sure that everybody um, benefits from, from the the growth, the potential in food systems, um, and that the risks are not unequitably pushed uh, to those who are least able to take them, but also have the least power to resist that uh, risk, uh, uh, that risk, and that the rewards are also shared more equitably. So these are three critical things that also lie at the heart of the UN Food Systems Summit about how do we actually unify and actually achieve these different things. Behind that, of course, is for those outcomes are a number of dimensions of, well, this is, these are the, the um, more explicit and implicit aspects of systems that shape how food systems are able to deliver on those outcomes. So at the top are the things that we often recognize most because they're the most explicit. Um, the policies, the way that business is, is done, 
the way that we have legal systems that operate um, and the resource flows, the investments that are uh, tend to be made. The second level is, is equally important within systems, which is about, well, who is connected in what way with whom? So, and what, what relationship do they have to each other? So what voice do they have? What influence do they have? And that's of course very, in, in, very meshed with the idea of power dynamics. Be, you know, the relationships and the connections determined also the power, power dynamics. It's very much easier if you're in a position to call up the Minister of Agriculture and say, hey, you know, maybe you should be doing something about um, um, stimulating the production of, of healthy food, um, uh, um, health, uh, 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 horticulture products. Um, it's going to be a lot, perhaps a lot easier than and if you're uh, in a position where you have to set up a large public campaign to be able to draw the attention of the Minister of Agriculture to bring across a message like that. And behind all of that are the mental models or the mindset, as we've also talked about uh, in this module, that shape the way that we actually look at um, what we want to be achieving and how we see that things actually operate. So whether we actually think that you know, there's a mental model about saying um, equitability is or isn't a priority. Um, therefore, that determines who I listen to and who I don't listen to or what priorities I set. So there's an interaction across, across all of these. And when you talk about transformative, transforming things, you act across all these, these dimensions or any one of them, and they'll have their impact on other levels as well. Two more minutes, Joost. Yep, I'm. Uh, I've got two more slides, and so you know that means in terms of our thinking, you know, if we look at the, that mindset, is actually changing the way we look at food systems along these kinds of lines. You know, for example, we've been thinking very much linearly. How do we actually think in a more circular manner? So it doesn't happen by itself. Um, um, in the desired direction. It happens all the time, but if you want to go in a particular way, then you have to be deliberate. And there's essentially four key dimensions. Well, there's a lot more, of course, but there are four basic things that you need to be looking at. I'll be looking with the cases at this, which is, first of all, that sense of urgency. Yes, this is an issue. This is a priority that we all agree on. We want to act on. The second is about, well, how do we actually make sure, you know, who is actually having influence on things. The third is turning that sense of urgency and that, that change voice into an actual agenda. This is what we agree that we're going to be doing in the future. And the last is about turning that agenda, not stopping with the agenda, but saying, okay, how are we gonna implement it? And how are we going to hold each other accountable? Plenty of good ideas on paper, um, too little action happening on the ground. Behind that, we know from, you know from systems thinking, it's complex and it's innovative. So let's just take a look very briefly at, whoops, I'm sorry, I've got my, my transitions wrong. A very, you know, very simply, um, the context of the UN Food Systems Summit is also what I would say the SDG uh, goals. So the urgency started in not uh, in, a, in a certain way deliberately and in a general way already in 1987 and earlier about saying, hey, we're running into the limits of our growths. We have to rethink around our global systems, including our food systems. Over the years, since 87, I'm showing you, you know, there's been various um, environment and sustainable development summits. This is a picture which I, which I, which I always find interesting because you have there, um, a very, you know, a symbol of rebalancing of power, where a former convict became a head of state, which then hosted a global uh, conference on, on environment sustainability, Johannesburg in 2002. So that's shifting the voice and the influence and the actors. That's led to a rethought agenda, the SDG ad agendas, um, which is a step further than the Millennium Development Goals in 2000. The SDGs was a very collective global government appropriate uh, supported and approved agenda and within behind that there's a whole system of indicators that are actively tracked and reported back in terms of the the accountability so that's a very short example of the, also the time frame and the kind of process of system change <laughs> 